Salamat Pagi from Penang. Indeed, I am in Malaysia, a country known for not only its incredible cuisine, but also its multicultural influence. Now, the mosque behind me is one of the oldest and most prominent in Malaysia. And it was in fact built back in the 1800s by a South Indian Muslim who went by the moniker of Kapitan Kerling, roughly translating to the leader or captain of the South Indian Muslim population. So, with my local hat, old Kapitan Britan wants to head downtown into Georgetown, where I am specifically, and explore more of the culture and history here, whilst hopefully also grabbing some breakfast and a little trim, if I can, along the way. So without further ado, let's head down to Georgetown. All right, now I have it on good authority that the place to try around here isn't Danish biryani, but in fact is Roti Chennai. Now, I believe, whilst I understand what roti is, it's one of my favorite Indian breads back home, I believe that Chennai makes it something special. Salamat the tang, gentlemen. Yes, hello, hello. One, hello. Wow. Where are you from? From Where England. Nice. Ah, I came from Jakarta. Jakarta. You know, what is that? Masjid Istaklal. Istaklal. Yeah, good. independence. What do you want? I would like to try roti chennai. Chennai. Classic. Or oh, give it lamb or chicken. What do you want? Oh. Lamb is very really nice. Yeah, I will have gosh. I will have lamb. Please. Thank you, How sir. Okay, great. Wow. Nice lemon tea. Okay, take photo. Of lemon tea would be delicious. Thank you. Yes. Wow. So look at this. Yeah. Those are the roti, and they look way nicer than anything I've known before. Delicious. Thank you, sir. Nice and thick, almost like pancakes. And then you've got the various sauces and the meats up there, the gravy. Delicious. Hello, sir. Such a friendly place. So the lady here is preparing the onions. It smells very good. Nice to meet you. Ah, my favorite, the chili. I like it spicy. Lovely to meet you. This is a great spicy. Yeah, nice and spicy. I like it local spicy. And then, hello lady, and then the eggs as well. We've got everything going on here. It's a delicious roti. Tea, lemon tea, iced tea. Perfect. So, milk tea. Mrs. Milk. Tea? Milk. Oh, with milk, like chai. Yes. Okay. okay. All right, so, I best take a seat. Thank you, my lady. Thank you very much. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. All right, I try my iced lemon tea. And hopefully, don't fall very ill tomorrow, given the water. Oh, delicious. Really refreshing, as you'd expect. Doesn't taste too overpowering, too much like tea. It has a nice edge to it, it's not just sweet. Good balance of sugars, very refreshing. I have my favorite food coming. And the Chennai element apparently is curry, so that's very good for me, even better. Oh, thank you so much. Look at this, guys, so I've got it. Legendary roti, two of them are. Oh. They feel so, so good. Nice and One squishy more, as well. Yeah, together. Oh, together. and this is like that? You yes, put it together? Yeah. Okay. Mix together. Okay. And whilst this might look really messy at home, and it is messy, it's how it's meant to be done. So, let's get the first taste of the lamb. Mm. Lamb is tender, yet it has so much flavor. Mixing uh, the two of them together, is the traditional thing to do. I'm not sure they taste very similar, I'm not sure that it adds a massive amount, but it's the traditional way to do it. And indeed, getting it all in one plate does make it a little messy, but like the say of eating Big Macs around the world, <laughs> the messy food is often worth it, like burritos, tacos, and all the rest. And this certainly uh, fits that criteria. So I'm gonna very much enjoy this now. Enjoy my 
South Indian experience here. Dig into my road to Chennai, my new favorite already here in Malaysia. Honestly, incredible. Some of the best food I've had on my travels, and I think actually my favorite. Oh. Thanks for looking after me. All right, that, as I said, was absolutely delicious. What a find. So the total price was 21 Malaysian ringgit, which at the moment, with there being about 17 pence in sterling to a ringgit, so consider it 20 US cents, it cost around three pounds 50, so slightly less than $5. But as much as the friendly man said, don't worry, don't worry, give me the exact 21, after I'd pulled out the 20 and he saw a one, the first thing that came to hand was another 10. So I paid 30, which I thought was a fair price, given how delicious it was and how hospitable the people were. And that's a recurring theme. Everywhere that I go around the world, it seems, with that kind of culture, so hospitable. Anyway, with the standard set rather high now, I want to continue my search for a skin fade around here. And if it's anything as good as the food that I've just had, then the Desi Barber of Riga would best watch out. All right. This place is looking a little bit more like a Chinese quarter potentially, with the signage up there. However, whilst there are markets, street sellers, I don't see many tourists, certainly no Westerners. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, yeah. Nice to see you. Okay. What is this one? Hamidia restaurant with Islamic writing. That makes sense. Hopefully we are somewhere within reach of a Desi barber if possible. Hello. Hello, yes. Hello. You from Malaysia? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Friendly people. It looks like we found ourselves an Indian barber shop. I think if I understand the, uh, the language correct. Let's see, are the prices reasonable? <clears throat> looks quite fancy. Okay, haircuts, 55. So lunch was 21. It's about two and a half times that. So seven, about 10 pounds sterling. Let's give it a go, see if it can fit me in. So like, hello, sir. Yeah, brother. Hello. Yep. It's uh, it's okay for yeah, camera yeah. for YouTube. Go nice on. to meet you, James. Yes, I'm Dan. Dan. Yep. Nice to meet you, Dan. Yes. Dapper Dan. Is it possible to get a skin fade? Yep. Thank you. Wow. This is such a wow. Such a barber shop. It smells incredible. Yes. And all the gold. Hello, sir. Hello. James. I am Darwin. David. Darwin. Darwin. Yes. From India. No, I am local. Ah, okay, interesting. I will remove <laughs> the cap for the overgrown hair. If we could please uh, do skin, mid skin fade. Mid skin fade? Okay, how about the top? Mm, just a little bit off, not... Like, like not a tiny, tiny bit? Yeah, tiny bit, not really any shape or anything, just uh, a little trim. It seems ages since I've done one of these haircuts videos. I think ever since, it was probably Manila, where I buzzed it off. <laughs> which actually was right at the beginning of the trip. My first destination after the connection in Singapore. And now of course, here we are in my final weekend on this trip before again, the connection in Singapore in a couple of days time. And I'm back in the chair. We got a lot of culture, like uh, we got a uh, Indian, Malay, Chinese, of course, like Iban. Chinese. Iban? Yeah. What is Iban? Yeah, Iban, like uh, you go like a Sabah from the other side of Malaysia. Oh, okay. Iban, the, some, you know, like, uh, like they, they are some, some like, uh, they go like great Indians. They are, they stay in the jungle. Ah. People, we call them like Orang Asli. So like native or indigenous yeah, people? Yeah, yeah, like, uh, you know, like Aboriginal. Aboriginal. Uh, Aboriginal, uh, yeah, Aboriginal. Yeah, yeah. Like, like Aboriginal. Oh, wow, yeah, okay. They had with Malaysia. But you need to go like a uh, like, uh, mountain area, like a jungle area, you know? But they are always unity. No exactly. anything here, uh, they're just like a friendly, you know? 
Đồ Indo, Indo là tin Yes Thế là cái nó cũng phè A terminal closed to the job What, what, what is that you say? It's a prison? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It's like old days, like, like 50s, 40s. Yeah. We got a prison over there. Ah, and then okay. Like HIV sickness people. Ah. We were surprised there in the in the island. Okay. But now the prison will be closed. Oh wow. Now become a tourist area, like you can go like go. But yeah. nobody nobody lives there now. Ah uh, no, I have some hotels, you know, resorts. Restaurant, oh, okay. Only for tourists, you know. Right, right. Yeah. So there's, so there's a prison on an island that formerly, yeah, housed HIV patients or people with HIV. I suppose in a similar way to uh, so-called leper island that I believe is randomly somewhere in Greece or off Crete from <laughs> when I've been there on holiday. Ah, so apparently this building, like many others in the area, is in fact a UNESCO protected heritage site. So you can't actually modify them in any way, or it's very limited. And that relates back, as Dan was just saying, to the after the, the war and there was the Japanese occupation, it was indeed the British who helped to enable the independence for Malaysia. So a lot of the uh, post-war history and some of the architecture here is not only multicultural in terms of multi-faith but also relating to the British and indeed the movement towards independence eventually. Maybe that's why this building felt so good yeah. the moment I walked in. Yeah. Not only is it beautiful but I could feel some Britishness, a taste of home. <laughs> Alright, I think I may, after this, need to retire, retire the hat of Java that I picked up all that time ago. So I'm not going to mess up my new cut. And I think time has run its course. So maybe as a little donation, <laughs> I will donate to you the Mount Bromo hat, the one that's been up mountains with me. It's been on so many expeditions, and who knows, if ever I make it on YouTube, <laughs> you will have the YouTuber's hat. <laughs> the magic hat. That's brilliant. Thank you, my friend. Okay. Oh, nice. Oh, that smells good. Oh. And cooling as well. Okay. Oh, right. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Legend. Yeah. <laughs> what a cut. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you for having Thank me in you. your shop. Thank you. Ooh. There Huge we go. Huge. This you can hang on the wall or do <laughs> whatever you like with. I will now donate the magic hat. I will hang it here on the Dyson. Whoa. Oh, I shouldn't drop it. Oh, on the barber's shears. There we go. Goodbye, Bravo hat. It's been emotional. Right. Let me settle up. Yes. Yeah. And we'll get out of here. Have a good day. Take care, thank you. All right, what a brilliant cut that was. Very pleased with that. It came in at 55 on the nose, so I haven't been overcharged or anything like that. So, I think now, with it being such a glorious afternoon, having had delicious food and a brilliant fade, I'm feeling in a good place. So as I was chatting away to the barber, he suggested that I should go up to Penang Hill, as it's known. There's apparently a two kilometer long cable car or funicular up there, which should give me a view over the entire city of Penang. So that sounds like a good call. But it's a little bit further away from here, so I need to perhaps get a grab and we'll head down in that direction. Usually I have my hair cut uh, every fortnightly, so only 10 minutes. Okay, so apparently <laughs> the driver's just told me that um, the actual Indian barber shops along the likes of what I was looking for normally only cost 10 ringgit <laughs> and that's where he gets his done. <laughs> so whilst the place that I've just been in was great, I did pay uh, a lot more than I needed to but as I said, the guys were brilliant, 
as you saw it was all really plush relaxing and I got some tips as well including where we're heading to now so I can't complain I highly recommend them but indeed there are a lot of options around here it seems and the Indian influence lives on so I will let you know when we get up to Penang Hill and this massive funicular Funicular train We have made it oh, to Penang Hill in all its glory. Apparently a station behind me. Wow. I like your whistle. It's like DJ Alligator. Hello guys. Hello. Okay. Hello. 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 Spider-Man. <laughs> I need a ticket for the funicular. Ticket? This way, okay. I have one ticket, please, for a funicular. That's fine, okay. A 45 minute wait, it's no problem. I will work on my suntan in the shade and also my tolerance and patience. All right, we are off on the two kilometer funicular. As you can see, we have a packed audience, which at one point even included our late dear Queen Victoria of England, when she visited this place a long, long time ago. And in fact, this place is celebrating its centenary, 100 years since it was first built. I'll tell you what, it's going at quite a speed. I'm not sure how things move this fast. And horses and carriages, but they're very impressive. Anyways. Let's enjoy the ride up. meters to be exact above sea level and to disembark this craft wow check it out <laughs> all right let's bust out of here i know it's a touristy spot but i've been surrounded by children infants and everything else but god knows how long in there in the queue and then here so let's take a look at what we've got Temples and mosques to the left, a police station, botanical gardens, it's reminding me of Bogor now. What else? Ah, Sky Deck. That sounds more like it. Maybe I'll get a drink at the Railway Cafe as well afterwards. I don't know what David Brown's restaurant is. Who was David Brown? Sounds like an MP or something. No, David Brown? This is probably a spurious, is it spurious link? Tenuous link. David Brown was the designer, Huddersfield born and bred, might I add, Yorkshire, for Aston Martin. And hence the DB11 or whatever, DB7, was David Brown. You learn something new every day. Wow. I've seen some views in my time on travels. But just look at that. You can even see something of a different weather system or weather front coming in over the hills just over there. And of course the bridge that connects Penang the mainland to Georgetown, the side that I'm on currently. It actually reminds me of the first video I ever made. I know I'm becoming all nostalgic towards the end of my time here in Asia. And the help that you guys have given me along the way. 
which I do mean sincerely. But it reminds me of the old Pior Lotti hill. Pior Lotti, the writer in Istanbul. You probably haven't seen that. I was going to say in case or if you haven't seen it, then go and check it out. But the reality is that that video, I think, had perhaps 100 or 200 views. Barely 100 views. It was the first video I ever made. And it has a viewing platform or a hill very much like this, an observation deck. And I think that's the only thing I could possibly compare to this. Well, wow, save for the uh, banging up there, the construction work. This place really is quite peaceful. Just listen. Can you hear the crickets? Like humming away? Down in the trees, a little forest beneath me. Feels like we're in the jungle. But some incredible views across the city. Doesn't look quite as fancy down there. You've still got the high rises. But it looks to be perhaps more working class than necessarily the bayside where you've likely got all of the fancy hotels. Let's see if we can get up to the skywalk. Now the other viewing platform appears to be closed, but fear not, you're never too far away from another beauty spot here. Wow. It's been quite amazing today in a brief amount of time to get a feel for the city. And indeed, as I gaze over Georgetown and mainland Penang in the distance, is indeed, metaphorically, a way to remind myself of what we've learned this morning or so far in terms of the multicultural faith here. Not only have I had the best roti and the decent haircut, but we've also learned a thing or two through the mosque, the masjid at the beginning and how it was owing in fact to an Indian Muslim so with all that good stuff in tow and having reveled in the delights of this view, I think I'm going to take a little stroll around, a final walk around the botanical gardens at the top, which I won't bore you with, turning it into some sort of walking tour or Bagore video, <laughs> I kid. And yeah, recharge the batteries for both the GoPro and myself. And is it Sunday tomorrow? Maybe go and check out one of the markets for the culture. And with that, I'm gonna get out of here. See you then. <laughs>